But first, uh, excuse me, miss. Miss, uh, what's the special for today, please? The special is me. Who? Me, Linda Lavin, from Alice. Oh! <laughs> to millions of fans, she's just known as Alice, the wonderful waitress from the hit TV show of the same name. But in real life, she's Linda Lavin, who was a musical top who was chirping three little fishes and God bless America before she could climb out of her playpen. Linda Lavin in Washington, D.C. to receive an award from the National Commission on Working Women. But first, found in a more familiar habitat. We arranged our interview in what we thought would be a comfortable setting for her. And Linda swung right into action. Who gets this? Rubens. Oh, does this you? Oh, see? You're fine now, aren't you? Oh, excuse me. You're very soft-spoken. Thank you very much. Is everything fine? Anything else I can get you? No, I think that's just fine. Okay. Very good. Okay, um, then that's it? That's well, that's very expensive. <laughs> I wouldn't pay that if I were you. Oh, my. Well, eat up. Have you ever actually had to work as a waitress? No, I have not seriously ever worked as a waitress. You're probably the only actress in the whole world that never had to wait on tables at some point in her career. I had to, but I chose not to because I was too scared of it. I worked at, uh, in uh, clericals and uh, in sales. Did you like that? No. I didn't like any of it. I wanted to be an actress, but it was a way to make a living while I was auditioning, you know? How do you feel about waitresses now that you've worked in this role for a while? I have inordinate respect for them. It's a very difficult job, and they're required to do much more than simply serve food, you know? Uh, they have to be uh, uh, listeners, and they have to be beautiful and cute and charming and bright. They have to be... Uh, a lot is, is asked of waitresses, and they're on their feet all day long, and we rehearse of this show on our feet all day long, so we have some sympathy with how that feels. Your legs get really tired. So I have a, a physical sympathy with the job, as well as an emotional one. It's very difficult work, and I hope that we've brought some dignity to the job of being a waitress on television, you know. Used to be sad. In her TV role, Alice dreams of going to California to become a singer. But it is the relationships among the characters that make the show tops in the ratings. Well, Flo, you pretty upset for a woman who's going away on a romantic weekend. I ain't going nowhere. Last night, me and Earl were jitterbugging at the VFW, and Earl started showing out and got to moving too fast. He tripped over his own two feet, did a belly wipe right into the band, and ended up with his head through the accordion. <laughs> loose they'd squeezed out two choruses of lady of spain i understand that flo is leaving the show polly holiday is staying the season with us but toward the end of the season she's leaving to do four of her own shows she's spinning off so the character will be replaced by another a character very similar to to Flo and be and it will be played by Diane Ladd who's the actress who played Flo in the movie oh. Alice doesn't live here originally so we're very excited for Polly and to have Diane come and join us do you think that Alice will ever get to California and become a star I'll tell you I asked that the first year before we put the series on the air I asked that of a CBS executive and he said he didn't think that you know she'd ever make it to Hollywood but he's no longer at CBS it's true so uh, you know we've done a show this year which is going to be on the air in, in November with Dinah Shore where they all do go out to Hollywood and uh, at least there are glimpses of the dream that she's attaining some kind of fantasy at moments but I think it's necessary for the show to stay where it is for those relationships to continue for life to continue in a realistic way how long can the Alice show go on I hope it goes on for the limit. I love doing it, and it's opened a lot of doors for me. Is and it restrictive doing a show like this constantly? Just the pressure of it alone. Uh, the pressure gets less as we become, well, we're in our fourth year now, and if we get into the fifth year next year, we'll go into syndication, and then we're only contracted to do seven years, and it goes quickly, you know, and the pressure is less all the time. And right about then, we lost our star to the hungry demands of lunchtime patrons. How are you doing? Can I help you? I'm all right. How are you doing? I'm all right. You want anything? Yeah. What do you want? Good drink. Oh, so do I. Beer? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. They have, do they have any beer here? <laughs> Budweiser, Heineken. <coughs> what do you say? A Heineken. OK, well, I'll have a Heineken. I'll get it. Where okay. is it? <laughs> <laughs> 
You're never gonna get this shot. I... Look how nice. Yeah. Glasses in a refrigerator. Frosted. Yep. We you know how to do it. I hope so. Someone took your water? Just a second. Now this forces the waitress down into a position. Well, I wouldn't think it's much fun to go up and down like that all day. Can I get you all any water? You didn't finish the hot fudge. Do you know how much I want that? Was it good? It was real rich, wasn't it? How often can you eat that? Huh? Once a year. Oh, what a lucky person you are. And then it was time for Linda to leave, but not before the odd coffee shop waitresses presented their celebrity colleague with a cake. The waitresses told us they identified with Alice. Linda obviously identified with them. Then it was off to a reception, where much of the talk focused on Linda's upcoming TV movie, which also focuses on the problems of the working woman. It's called The $5.20 an Hour Dream, in which Linda plays a woman intent on getting a better paying production line job, previously restricted to men. But there are problems. I know there's a job on the production line, Mr. Blake, and I know I can do it. And I promise I'll work twice as hard to prove I can do it. The more do I have to do? Isn't there a law? I hope you're not talking about suing. I don't think it'd be necessary to do anything like that. On her visit to Washington, the finale came that evening with an award from the National Commission on Working Law and a grateful acceptance speech. What this feels like is a gift to me and it, it reminds me that one of my first responsibilities when I took the role of Alice and my first commitments was that knowing how valuable, how powerful the medium of television is, that I had the responsibility and that indeed we could reach out to those of you out there and say, hello, you're not alone. If I can do it, you can do it. I feel that responsibility more today for this. Thank you very, very much. We'll be right back with our PM Magazine departments. <laughs>